All right, I know we're late to the party, but I finally have the 2024 ROG Zephyrus G4 T. There is a lot to unpack with this laptop, no pun intended. Asus is doing some cool stuff with this machine. I'm actually really excited doing a live unwrapping for you guys. There she is, the new Zephyrus G14. Let's get started. So Asus has redesigned the new G14 from top to bottom, despite them using the same GPUs from last year. The switch to AMD's new Ryzen 8000 series isn't anything groundbreaking since it's basically Ryzen 7000 sprinkled with AI, meaning these new chips come with faster NPUs um, than the previous generation. But let's talk about this new design because I think Asus has outdid themselves by crafting one of the best premium-based 14-inch gaming laptops on the market. They basically took the G14 that we all love and just dialed it up to 11 to compete with the likes of the Razer Blade 14 uh, and the new HP Omen Transcend 14, which I'm stoked to review. By the way, if you guys are interested in checking that out, let us know in the comments down below. But anyways, you're greeted by a chassis that's crafted from CNC milled aluminum, which is a day and night difference compared to the previous generation G14 in terms of handling. It's much more uh, rigid, 16% thinner, and surprisingly lighter as well. I think we're talking about 0.3 pounds of difference, which is pretty amazing. It's actually pretty close to my 14 inch MacBook Pro in terms of size, uh, which is a pretty big achievement for the engineers at ROG. This platinum white model also looks absolutely stunning. Asus has toned down the aggressive styling this year while retaining some ROG DNA like this embedded slash lighting feature that allows user to customize lighting patterns through the Armory Create software. Now you can choose to disable this for a subtle look and it can also potentially extend the battery life as well. The interior space has been updated to match the aesthetics of the exterior. Thanks to the unibody aluminum construction, the keyboard doesn't flex as much as the older model. The keycaps are slightly larger now, offering 1.7 millimeters of key travel distance. Now having tested both the older G14 and the newer one, um, I honestly wasn't able to tell a huge difference between the two uh, because it was already great to begin with. So why fix something that isn't broken, right? I'm also not a huge fan of the fonts that they've used here because it just feels a bit out of place with the overall subtle design of the laptop. Now, despite these keys featuring RGB lighting, I just disabled them completely throughout my testing because A, it just clashes with the white keycaps and B, the LEDs lack consistency. They just haven't taken any measures to diffuse the lighting properly. I really wish they addressed that this year uh, because it was an issue with last year's G14, but yeah one thing that they just slacked off on. You still get dedicated keys for volume control, mic mute, and accessing Armory Crate. Sadly, they did eliminate the fingerprint scanner from the power button, but you can rely on a Windows Hello for login uh, as a backup. The trackpad is slightly different, uh, but it still retains its glass surface. Although I did notice that it requires a little bit more force to click compared to last year's G14. Uh, this might be tiring over time if you prefer clicking over tapping for validation. I prefer clicks, so it was just really hard for me to get used to. But uh, other than that, uh, it was a pretty smooth navigating experience. Now, the other change within the keyboard deck is the relocation of the front-facing speakers. Now, Asus has added more speaker holes to fit larger tweeters for better audio performance. Now, in total, I think you get about six speakers, including the woofers at the bottom. And the end result is one of the best sound systems that you can get on a Windows laptop in this form factor. The bass is more boomy, the trebles are crispier. It's not as loud as my 14-inch MacBook Pro, but it certainly levels above every other Windows laptop with bottom-facing drivers. So this is what the webcam looks like on the new G14. Now they're using the same 1080p sensor from the previous model, so you're not gonna notice a huge difference in detail. Uh, but what I will say is the microphone quality is superb uh, on this laptop. I mean, Asus has built a lot of uh, processing modes built in like directional recording, stereo enhanced, 360 degree recording modes, and it's got AI noise canceling working behind the scenes to illuminate all the background noise. So for conferencing and all sorts of stuff, this microphone, 
gets the job done really well. Now the port setup has been revised for this year's G14. So on the right hand side, you get USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, which doubles as a DisplayPort 1.4 pass-through that's linked directly to the discrete GPU, USB Type-A, and a micro SD card slot. Not sure how many of you guys would actually use that, but I would have actually preferred another Type-C or Type-A port. Uh, switching over to the left hand side, you get audio, uh, your second USB Type-A port, USB 4 uh, Type-C with DisplayPort pass-through, although that one's linked to the internal graphics card, the Radeon GPU, uh, and it also supports power delivery up to 100 watts. You also get HDMI 2.1, and finally, the power port has been replaced with their proprietary slim port. Now, there has been a lot of discussion about why this was USB Type-C, but according to ASUS, this new port was designed to deliver more power than USB-C's 240 watt max spec. I believe this one can push 330 watts and above while being a lot more efficient, both in heat output and cost. Plus, it's reversible, so that's a nice bonus. Now, the power cable itself is pretty long, and I'm glad that Asus didn't go with a braided solution like Razer did or does with their Razer Blade laptops. Uh, so this one's just much more easier to handle, and the power adapter is a really nice and compact 180 watt unit. So this whole package fits into my backpack, no problem. If you're a student, you're gonna love this setup. All right, so let's talk about this new display, shall we? There's been some interesting updates this year. Firstly, they replaced uh, the all IPS and mini LED options with OLED. So this means you're greeted with a really sharp and vibrant 3K 120 hertz panel. They've kept the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which I appreciate, and the color reproduction is fantastic with better Adobe RGB coverage. This makes it suitable for creators, uh, 3D artists, or just programmers, or just anyone who needs a really sharp and vivid screen. However, Choosing OLED means sacrificing peak SDR brightness performance. As you can see, last year's G14 is much brighter than the OLED offerings, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Additionally, last year's panel was faster at 165 hertz compared to this generation's 120 hertz. So while you are getting a visually stunning display, you're sacrificing in a few other areas. But there is one more thing. You see, ASUS being ASUS added something called VRR, or variable refresh rate. You see, conventional IPS panels project an entire image at once where brightness levels don't get affected regardless of how fast your screen is when you're in a gameplay setting, um, since there's only one backlit source. OLED displays light up multiple times for each frame since each pixel is its own light source. And that can cause brightness and color irregularities, which can also lead to a bit of screen tearing. Now to solve this, ASUS partnered up with NVIDIA and Samsung to improve the refresh rate and brightness uh, synchronizations by essentially setting the pixel emission rate to 960 hertz on the G14. So this essentially results in a consistent and tear-free gaming experience thanks to support for G-Sync now, and you're also not being affected with brightness and color irregularities. It's Pretty amazing to witness this on a portable gaming laptop. We've seen this on TVs, but that requires a lot more computation. But getting that into such a small form factor is pretty incredible. You really have to see it in person to appreciate this technology. That being said, all of this tech comes at a price, right? Well, yes and no. So Asus is offering two SKUs this year in the US. The base spec includes an RTX 4060 with a Ryzen 9 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, a terabyte of storage, and the OLED panel for $1,600, which is the same as last year's spec. However, the 4070 spec unfortunately costs $100 more than last year's G14 equipped with the same GPU. So it does end up costing you a premium. Asus is not offering a 4080 or 4090 SKU, which makes total sense since it didn't really work on the previous generation considering how restrictive they were with uh, power allocation. Those uh, models or those GPUs are reserved for the G16. Now, for our Canadian friends, Asus is offering an exclusive 4015 model for, uh, get this, $2,200 Canadian, which is absolutely absurd in my opinion. It seems like inflation is just playing its part here, but you might be asking, are you actually gaining or losing anything with this new redesign and the price difference with the higher-end specs, of course? And well, why don't we start with upgradability? Because the first thing you're giving up is access to RAM modules. That's right. This year, you're stuck with soldered memory, and the maximum you can configure is up to 32 gigabytes, which is devastating news for anyone looking to expand beyond that. But they have to do it to keep up with the slim form factor. 
but at least you get access to the single populated M.2 Gen 4x4 SSD, which performs about the same compared to last gen. You'll also notice that they've ditched the vapor chamber cooling system with a brand new triple fan design accompanied by seven heat pipes. Now, that third fan is supposed to direct air to the internal components to keep the CPU and GPU temps under control. Interestingly, there is a built-in dust filter over here, which is pretty thoughtful, but at the end of the day, when you put all of this together, how does that actually help the CPU and the GPU? Well, let's take a look at how they behave. Now, similar to last year, we have three performance modes, silent, performance, and turbo. Uh, we'll focus on performance and turbo for both the 2023 G14 that we have over here and the new 2024 G14, since that's what most people are interested in. Keep in mind that uh, the G14 that we reviewed last year has uh, an RTX 4060, so it's not a perfect apples to apples comparison, but it should give you a good idea in terms of what has changed with the newer model, and if you're sacrificing any. Starting with CPU power levels, turbo mode behaves very similarly to the 2023 model, with just a tiny two watt difference between them, which isn't very significant. However, last year's model maintained those levels for longer compared to a slight dip in the 2024 G14 during the first few minutes of our test. In performance mode, there's a slight advantage for the 2023 model, but both end up consuming the same 45 watts. But surprisingly, when we look at clock speeds, it looks like we might have won a silicone lottery on the 2024 G14. Frequencies were actually slightly higher on this model with a 120 megahertz difference in turbo mode and about a 90 megahertz difference in performance mode. Now, while these temperature chart lines look completely different, both these laptops ultimately end up at the same place. It's just how they get there is very different. It's very clear that the fan profiles and the general performance characteristics of the cooling system have changed a lot, which makes sense since ASUS completely revamped the cooling system this generation to make it smaller and lighter while also adding a third fan. But if we switch over to the GPU, you can clearly see that ASUS has dialed back on the power allocation for the RTX 4070. In comparison, the 2023 G14 with the RTX 4060 was balling at 120 watts in turbo mode. So a 30 watt difference is pretty significant, guys. Now you might be wondering about last year's G14 with a 4070, and I can confirm that it was also running at close to 120 watts. So it's pretty clear that this new design has brought a negative impact in terms of how much power these chips can consume. Now comparing performance modes, we see a very similar pattern with the 2023 G14 drawing about 20 watts more than the 2024 G14. Now the difference in power obviously impacts clock speeds over time. But it's hard for us to demonstrate that since we are dealing with two different GPUs here. The 4060 on last year's G14 always runs at higher clocks than the 4070 at the same power level. And obviously that leads to significantly higher clock speeds in this comparison since it has even more power to play around with. I guess the one positive aspect of these restricted power levels is notably lower GPU temperatures, both in turbo and performance modes. Uh, the new G14 levels off to around 76 degrees Celsius compared to 85 degrees Celsius on the older G14. So I guess that's good news. So in the end, how does that all translate to real world performance? I'm gonna start with some synthetic tests just to get a baseline and move on to some longer tests. So in Cinebench multi-core, what you'll be seeing here is gonna be repeated throughout almost all of these results. Basically, when it comes to intensive multi-core workloads, the Ryzen 9 8945HS doesn't necessarily yield a significant improvement over the 7940HS, despite it running at slightly higher clock speeds in both performance and turbo settings, because they're basically the same chip. Even single core performance is neck to neck compared to the huge leap that we saw from Ryzen 6000 to Ryzen 7000. Of course, the AMD systems can compete with Intel's Raptor Lake offerings, but it's a fact that these Ryzen CPUs do take the lead when it comes to power efficiency. Now, as I go through the rest of the benchmarks, it's pretty clear that the new G14 brings about a two to 3% improvement over the previous generation. Now, while this is a minor improvement, it may not be substantial enough to warrant an immediate upgrade. It just goes to show that Ryzen 7000 is still a terrific option in 2024, if you're looking to save a few bucks. You can certainly squeeze a lot of performance by enabling turbo mode, but it's not enough to overcome the previous generation, guys. Plus, enabling this mode can come at a cost, and that is an increase in noise levels. In fact, our tests revealed that the newer model is noticeably louder 
than its predecessor. Creator-focused applications like DaVinci Resolve Studio perform really well on this new G14. Uh, it actually managed to beat the new Legion 7i with a 14 Gen HX processor, and it's a small improvement over last gen 7940HS. Adobe Premiere Pro, on the other hand, did provide a generous improvement over last gen, but like we mentioned before, if you're using Premiere Pro, getting an Intel-based device will save you a ton of time for rendering outputs due to their quick sync engine optimizations. Shifting gears to gaming, and well, what can I say? I kind of saw this coming as soon as I analyzed the GPU's power and frequencies over time. The RTX 4070 on the newer model just leaves a ton of performance on the table due to its restricted power allocation. I mean, that RTX 4060 on the older model looks like a great deal right now because it's pretty much neck to neck to the 4070, both in performance and turbo modes. The 4070 is just taking a slight edge here since it has 50% more shaders than the 4060, but if we were to test last gen 4070 G14, there's no doubt it would have wiped the floor with this newer model in all of the games. The story at 1440p is almost the same. Despite the RTX 4070 running at a lower wattage, it closely mirrors the performance of the RTX 4060 from the previous generation. This represents one of the major drawbacks of this iteration, guys. ASUS prioritized aesthetics over functionality, ultimately compromising performance. Perhaps they could have increased the device's Z height to accommodate a more robust cooling system, allowing for greater GPU performance, but we have to face reality. And that's a result that falls short of the previous generation, which is concerning given the increasingly competitive landscape of the gaming laptop market. I'm actually curious about how the G16 would perform, but that's another topic for another video. The last thing that I wanted to cover here is battery life. And honestly, there are no surprises here in these results. Our tests showed that the newer model performed better under light loads, which we attribute to the power efficiencies baked into the Ryzen 8000 series. When it comes to medium workloads, both laptops perform similarly. However, when you push them to their limits, the newer model managed to outlast the previous Gen G14, which aligns with its lower power consumption. So here's the thing. I like the new G14, guys. I think they've definitely added some quality life improvements to this newer model. The first thing is, of course, the premium build quality you're getting with it. It's way better than what you get with the older generation. New speakers are fantastic. I mean, I've never actually experienced something as good in this form factor, way better than the older model. Uh, you also get, you know, that OLED screen, which is a chef's kiss. It's not the fastest out there. It's definitely not the brightest, but I think we have to give it to ASUS for pushing the limits of implementing something new, something different. If we analyze the performance factor, it's slightly better than the previous generation G14, even though they're basically the same chip, but you are losing a lot of FPS on the table with the GPU. Uh, and, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. When ASUS decided to make this smaller and thinner, they had to sacrifice on something. And sadly, that is gaming FPS. That's just, that's just a reality. So, if you are somebody who's looking for the best bang for the buck gaming laptop in the 14 inch laptop space, there's no denying the fact that the older G14 is still an excellent option. They're still selling it. In fact, I found one for sale for around $1,400 with an RTX 4070. I'll leave a link down below. It's a steal. You also get upgradable memory on the older G14, which is definitely a nice bonus over the newer model. But if you were to bring both these laptops in front of me, I feel like I'm gonna end up leaning towards the newer G14, simply because of the quality of life improvements that ASUS has done to this newer chassis. It's truly remarkable considering how thin it is, super portable, battery life is slightly improved. I mean, it's just a really great laptop. Just sucks about the performance. That's the only thing, but I guess I'm, I'm okay with that. Maybe you might not be, but yeah. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about the new G14. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.